Our guest today has uh, just arrived back from Ireland, from a man who travels extensively. It's the first time he's ever been to Ireland. So he uh, understood both the President and Sergeant at Arms Day. <laughs> Phil, as you would have noticed from the flyer on your table, has branched out. For those of you who are struggling in a relationship, by all means, give him a boy. The little card says, are you getting what you need from your current relationship? <laughs> Maybe it's time to move on. He guarantees that you'll get at least one of the cars and half the house. <laughs> I have uh, less than two minutes to introduce him because if we don't, Rotarians Brian Pittman and Bob Dallenberg get really agitated. <laughs> Phil Hop and Travel opened in September of 1990 and in the 13 years since, it has grown to be an agency that turns over $120 million a year. Well, that's what Phil admits to anyway. And he has a staff of 165 young, dedicated people who uh, very much contribute to the success of the agency. In fact, there are nine, eight branches throughout, uh, throughout South Australia. Phil is living proof that um, some Port Adelaide supporters can read and write. <laughs> he has a Bachelor of Science with Honours from the University of Adelaide. Didn't cost him many years, but a lot of money to get. <laughs> Phil has a, a list of achievements that would go on for all of 20 minutes, not the least of which is that in January of this year, uh, he was awarded an AM on Australia Day. The General Division of the Order of Australia. And we offer congratulations sir, to him for that. Phil Hop and Travel support many organisations. Phil himself is an ambassador for Minda, and the agency generally sponsors over 50 charities, clubs, and associations. He talks about travel with love, uh, with absolute passion, great enthusiasm, and a knowledge that's absolutely unsurpassed, I believe. Rotarians and guests, would you please welcome? One of our own, Rotarian Phil Hoffman. Amen. Thanks, Tony. Uh, good evening, it's quite a late thing, and also that little, uh, little note on your, your uh, tables. Uh, that's meant for the corporate people, because we have a corporate division at uh, Phil Hoffman Travel uh, for people getting to move from one company to another company, especially to our company. But. Uh, President Frank, I, I tasted a few gallons of uh, Guinness while I was away, and the more you drink, the more you understand what the Irish are actually saying. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got to say, especially at 5.30 in the morning, but, uh, but I've got to say, it's one of the most beautiful countries I've ever visited, and the greenest countries I've ever visited, it was Ireland and the friendly people. But I couldn't get over when you go to the little pubs, um, just how they uh, suddenly have a band playing from all over the world. I used to call it every night a United Nations band playing, but it was just fantastic. And as I said, I saw some beautiful countryside, so much so that I want to go back later on and, and uh, see, more, saw, see more of it. As far as the uh, Trailblazers are concerned, President Frank, I can't take any credit. As you know, uh, the body, I can't take any credit. The team, Grazia, certainly did it, and with his team, and Joe Max here today, and Trudy Francis, uh, and the others, uh, they, they got behind it, and I think we'll do even better next year, so they might vote me in next year, and I'll start training now. I uh, thought this afternoon, that's what I wanted to talk about, was just uh, one part of our business that has just grown enormously in the last, uh, probably, 10 years. And uh, probably 14 years ago, when I introduced it to the staff, they all thought I was on drugs when I said that I thought the cruise business was going to be a big part of our business as it started developing. Had, having developed in the States, went through a recession, and it started to bounce back. And uh, so I said, we have to get ready for it, we have to start training for it. And, uh, and now it's, it's, a, it's a big slice of our business. It's, it's only a part of it, but it's, it's still a big slice, and it's growing and growing. And I think one of the reasons why this uh, particular segment of the industry is growing because it's getting very exciting in terms of what it offers to the public, the inclusivity of the product, but just the diversity of the product as well. And uh, so I just wanted this afternoon, in the, in the short time I had, is just to talk to you about this part of the industry. It's certainly not a hard sell as far as for and travel is concerned. It's just what we're seeing in trends in this particular part of the industry. 
And so I just wanted to uh, show you some stats on the industry, just what is happening. And, uh, and you'll just see on those that the Australian passengers, this is for 212 figures, and I think 213 will be even bigger as it's coming through. Over 70,000 extra passengers were carried in the last year, uh, reaching 694,000 passengers for Australians that travelled on a cruise ship uh, out of Australia. 11% growth on the last year, and that was on a year before where we had a 34% growth. So you can see the figures that are starting to come out. And 3% of the population of Australia took a cruise holiday in, in, in uh, 2012, 2012. And that's a high penetration factor for, for any country. And so it's the population penetration rate second highest of the world source markets. And cruising from local ports, whether it's Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, or even Adelaide and Perth, occupies 70% of the total. Over the last four years, the cruise numbers have doubled. So we're seeing this explosion going on at the moment, and I'll, I'll talk more about that as we go look at the figures. The next slide, Europe and America continues to shine thanks to the markets going to America. Um, yeah, it's got to continue a bit. To the, to the uh, strong dollar. And river cruising there, which uh, I'm going to mention later on, continues to grow at an unbelievable pattern with 12% uh, growth. And we're just seeing the river boats now just occupying any, any country that has a river is going to be a target for river cruising. And people are just loving it because it offers such a wonderful way of travelling. The total sea days have increased to more than 7 million. And as I say, the other thing is that Europe is now the biggest fly cruise market for Australians with passenger numbers rising 26%. This will give you an idea from this graph of the passenger numbers increasing uh, from the year 2002 to 2012. And the prediction is by 2016 we'll reach 1 million passengers growing. Destinational wise, again you see South Pacific leads it, around Australia second, New Zealand is, is a good market, and Europe is, is increasing enormously, as you say, you see the growth there of 26%. Asia is actually a negative increase in terms of cruising, and river cruising growing rapidly at 12%, increasing every year. Alaska is still a good market for Australians. And the other one that's a surprise one there, but on a low base, is the Caribbean, and I'll talk why that is taking over, and also world cruising and world voyages. And can I just say that uh, one of my ambitions, one of my bucket lists, one day to be able to get away for three months and do a world voyage. Now my wife has told me there is no way she's going to cruise with me for 108 days, that she might do three or four weeks at a time, fly home for a week with the grandchildren and then maybe join me on the second or the last month of the trip. So we've got an arrangement that might work. Uh, there's the figures on South Pacific, and so these are some of the key markets I just want to show you about. Uh, Australia growing rapidly, New Zealand growing rapidly, and have a look at Europe on the next slide. We have just, in the last three years, seen the European market absolutely go through the roof for us. And one of the key components is there, again, the value of cruising, the inclusivity of what it offers. And I'll talk about that later on as well. And then have a look at the figures of river cruising. And when you consider that river cruising, only some of the boats only, only can take 134 uh, 34 people, that's an enormous figure that we're cruising out of Australia worldwide, river cruising uh, worldwide. Alaska, the Caribbean, Asia. Now the next one I want to show you is the demographics of the passenger age. And this is a surprising one. Well, not surprising to me because you know, I've seen it grow over the last uh, 10 years, but I've seen the average age come, come down. And there is still a perception out there wherever I talk that people think it's only for the oldies uh, that uh, you know go onto the promenade deck at two thirty in the afternoon, fall asleep, put the rug around them, and uh, the jaw opens and they dribble for the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> and it's nothing like that anymore. In actual fact, the age group is coming down, down, down. But more and more people are going and just enjoying what the ships are now offering. As I said, I talk at a lot of functions. People still have that perception of cruising and still think that the QE2 is the best ship afloat. Now, at the moment, sitting in uh, Dubai, they're not going anywhere. Uh, just have a look at the passenger mix on the Australian circuit. Uh, domestic is about 84% Australians travelling out of 
Australia on cruising, and about 16% international. And still more and more internationals are coming and joining it. Length of cruise, again, this is an interesting graph just to show you how the length of time of people going away. And in my last four years, I've seen the, the length of cruising that people are taking increasing, especially with Europe. We've seen it go from 12, 14, now to about an average nearly 20 days of cruising the Med, the Baltic, or wherever. And that is increasing each year, and people are loving it because it offers such great value. Market penetration, have a look at this graph. It just came in 212, and it shows Australia sitting in third place, second place in penetrating to the marketplace. And that's what I got excited about when I saw the figures with America years ago that I knew that Australians would take up cruising if we had the right vessels and the right uh, uh, product coming out, we'd certainly in, in increase that market share. And that's what's happening, you see, we've gone into second place. So only 3% of Australians can cruise, so for us it's a huge blue sky strategy as far as we're concerned. The next slide is I just want to start showing you I think some of the reasons why people are cruising, and that is because we're seeing new vessels being created, new markets being generated, and, and that age group changing. We're seeing multi-generational travel, we're seeing families doing more travelling together because there's so much fun being offered on board. And in some cases, the vessel actually becomes the destination, not where it's going. Just to show you that ship there, uh, that is a new ship that's been designed called Quantum of the Seas. And it's got a yard arm out there like the, uh, uh, the London Eye that's going to go and rotate around the ship so that you can get views of 360 degree views and it'll be 300 feet above the water. Wow. So just to show you what happened, I mean, in 2009, Royal Caribbean built one of the real, what we call game changers in the cruise industry. And that was the Oasis of the Seas. Carries five and a half thousand passengers. Um, it just it is just a magnificent ship. That's a fly rider surf simulator. It has rock climbing walls. Might not suit all of us going up the rocks there. But uh, here's me on the zip line going through the centre of the ship. Terrified? No, no, not me. But anyway, I went to the christening of Oasis of the Seas and I said, uh, in Miami, uh, sorry, Fort Lauderdale, I said five and a half thousand people, that would just be, you know, ugly. I got on in 12 minutes from the landing at the, air, at the uh, terminal, getting out my cab, giving the boys my uh, bags, and to my cabin, 12 minutes. A week later, two weeks later, I was getting on a cruise ship in Sydney to uh, test another ship that's come out to Australia, three and a half hours aboard to Sydney Harbour for a 2,000 passenger ship, and that was five and a half thousand. On it was some of the best restaurants that I've ever seen in my life, full size, full size ice skating rink, uh, Broadway shows, whatever. This is the uh, ice skating rink where they did some fantastic shows, and they were doing, uh, I think it was uh, one of the two John Travolta uh, shows on there when we were there. To give you a comparison, when people talk about uh, cruise ships, there's a, a photograph of it, or a size dimension of the Titanic. Let's put the ices of the seas against it. And uh, can I just say that sometimes when you're on one of the smaller ships that are in a harbour, an oasis comes in, or lure of the seas, which is its sister, uh, and you see the size of going, my God. But can I just say that the service on these ships is phenomenal, the way they look after people when they're on board. There is a new one coming out called Quantum of the Sea, which again is going to uh, revolutionise some of the shows on board and some of the things it's going to do. But have a look at this photograph. The, the new Quantum of the Seas is going to be 167,000 tonnes, 4,200 passengers. But here's a, here's a nightclub doing a show on board uh, Quantum of the Seas. And on these, this is just one of the dining areas there, entertainment areas on the, on the, on the ships. They really are building, as I say, space age stuff, but fantastic. On this new quantum of seas, they'll have so many in-connecting state rooms for families to be able to enjoy the benefits of, of cruising. And as I say, another part of the quantum of the seas, new concepts, and that is dodging cars. Now, you know, it takes you back to your childhood. Just to show you a comparison of the size, and this is why we say it changes. So when you see the big ships, the mega ships, and I'm talking 5,000 people, and then the larger ships, which is 3,000, 3,500, 
And then you come down to the small ships, which is only 100 passengers, such as the Orion, Noble Caledonia, and others. On the midships, the ship becomes the experience, not so much the destination, but when you come down the smaller ships, the destination becomes the real, real thing about where you go because they can fit it in. Just to show you some local market, uh, some ships in the local market, uh, this is Pacific Pearl, which does a lot of the Australian run out to the Pacific. And some of these ships were, in their times in the, in the late 90s, were, were new, breed, new, new vessels. But we're getting, when they come out to Australia, sometimes they're, you know, sort of uh, starting to get old. But they still do a great job to introduce uh, the clients to cruising for the very first time. They're introducing features like, you know, open air theatre at night and, um, and some, some of the stuff you can see out there. Now, I did this about eight weeks ago where I sat out there watching a movie where it was only about 12 degrees, but it was quite speculative sitting out there watching the movie, popcorn coming out, ice cream coming out. And so it's something very different, but something that uh, kids and others enjoy. The Pacific Jewel I went on as well as another ship that's out of Sydney doing the domestic market and the same, a lovely product. And uh, some of the things they've added there for spectacular shows. Uh, like Circuit Soleil being on those, some of those things there is uh, what they've introduced. <coughs> the Dawn Princess, I talked about world voyages, wanting to do a world voyages. Uh, that's the Dawn Princess that often does once a year, does a world voyage, 108 days. Can I tell you that we were selling that last year for 108 days, under $13,000 for 108 days. Now, try and put yourself anywhere, anywhere wow. for that sort of uh, fee uh, and be entertained, looked after and spoiled. One of the new ones that had this year was the new Royal Princess, which was uh, christened by Kate Middleton. I had an invitation to go, couldn't go because uh, I had other commitments, and so I sent two of my girls who said it was just the most specific thing that they'd been on. Uh, my wife found out that Kate Middleton was doing it, hasn't spoken to me for six months because we missed her going. She said, well, I could have gone on her own, you know, you didn't need me. But uh, the Prince Royal Princess, which is the new ship, uh, just inside, and I wanted to show a clip of the christening, but uh, it was only a couple of minutes where we can't get it up. But it's just a new dimension for Princess Cruising, and again, very specky, three and a half thousand passengers. It's that just now some of the restaurants they have on board, uh, and the entertainment, and some of the things they're offering in these ships is just fantastic at unbelievable pricing, absolutely unbelievable pricing. And that's the uh, the uh, with the Princess, and I'll come back to that one a bit there. A couple of other locals that are coming out, that come out every year from Royal Caribbean, is called the Rhapsody of the Seas, which is a lovely ship. Um, the Radiance of the Seas, some of the entertainment there. And the other one, which is the Voyager of the Seas, and that's, no, sorry, the next one. Voyager, Voyager of the Seas, which is one of the big ones, um, at three and a half thousand people. And then this year we saw Carnival Spirit come out, which is one of the, what we call the fun ships, the fun, fun ships from America. And it's gone so well with families that they're bringing a second one out in September 2014. And that has a, uh, one of these, uh, sorry, I'm talking too quickly. That's the Carnival Spirit, one of the American ships. The second one will come out in September. But they tried to get me on this uh, slide, but they said they, they thought I might get stuck. <laughs> I'm not sure. but they're working on it. One of the things that uh, we have done, and, and something I've been involved with, is we've actually done some theme uh, cruises of musicals, uh, where we've chartered the whole ship, and we put you know, rock and roll, and we call it you know, rock the boat one, rock the boat two. This year we've just completed the three cruises where we had country music on one, we had Rock the Boat uh, 3 with uh, Jimmy Barnes and others. And it's an Adelaide guy that puts these together uh, as far as all the actors, sorry, as far as all the, the characters on board, the singers and, the, and whatever. And people go on board and uh, just love it because it's nine days of cruise to virtually nowhere and they either have country music or jazz or, or Rock the Boat or whatever. And I've got some terrific clients that you know, I call seven star cruisers. And they come back and they say to me, Phil, that was the best week of my life. And I said, how could it be the best week of your life? And they said, well, we just party 18 hours a day. And we have to send them to bed at a certain time to be able to clean the ship up and clean the bars up. But you know, people just go, and it's great value. And they can rub shoulders with some of these former rock stars or country music, you know, Lee, Connie and others. So it's fantastic. And as I said, 
uh, come back onto the Royal Princess, christened in June 2003, just oozes class this whole ship when you see the, what, how they've designed it, 3,600 passengers, the largest top deck pool ever built on a, on a cruise ship, and uh, they just have, as I said, so many features, so many new restaurants, and the atrium, which is three, level, three decks uh, high, just full of entertainment on each deck, and you can sit there and just take the night in. And their sister ship is Regal Princess, very similar, same design. What a lot of the cruise vessels now do is they come out with a certain class of vessel, and then they'll produce two or three, and then change and, and upgrade to something different. And so the, 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 it's evolving all the time. That's what's the exciting thing for us in the industry, is we're just learning more and more about product uh, and how good it is as they, as they evolve that. It's one of the dining facilities on uh, Red on the Royal, just unbelievable for your own private dinner party on board. A couple of other ships that are just uh, coming out very, very well in the ratings in Celebrity Solstice. A lot of people don't know about celebrity ships, but they've brought one out into Australia doing Australian waters uh, out of Sydney for five, six months a year. But some of their international cruise ships, such as Celebrity Reflection, uh, and Celebrity Equinox, which do uh, Mediterranean cruising just out of this world as far as ratings are concerned. Can I just go back to... Now, there's an interesting concept of a ship. You know how people say, oh, I'm going to have an inside cabin well, on the oasis of the seas and the lure of the seas. Some of your inside cabins now face inside to the internal courtyard where activities are still going on. So you can have an outside cabin facing the sea, inside cabin facing inside, and then all the entertainment and the things going on down below. I just need some earmuffs in case you can't sleep. Uh, but a lot of, as I said, new features coming in all the time. They feel, don't they, to both? Sorry? No, no, they don't move. When they move through the water, they move. One of my favourite uh, cruise lines is Oceana, and I'm just going to show you uh, Ocean, Oceana Marina and uh, Riviera are two ships that uh, I love personally that just are getting rave reviews because of their facilities. And on those ships, which carry 1,200 passengers, there are 10 restaurants to choose from each night with no surcharging. And as I said, beautiful facilities to enjoy yourself. But it's certainly, as I say, good, good uh, entertainment as well. One of the old favourites is, uh, is QM2, uh, which comes to Adelaide every year now and does well out of the Australian market, and uh, it's, uh, that's gone very well. But uh, they're, they're having a problem now filling QM2 because some of their clients are, uh, you know, passing away, uh, and so they've got to get new clients. And people are not all into it because it is still a class ship in terms of, you know, if you book the Queen's Grill or the Princess Grill, that's where you dine, you can't dine else, or you can for them, but you can't the other way coming up. And so uh, they are trying to rejig of how they keep selling you know, chip. Here's a new one that uh, will blow you out the water. It's called the Norwegian Breakaway. It's um, 4,100 passengers, 29 restaurants on board, 29 restaurants you can pick from, and one of them on deck eight on the side of the ship, they've got just tapas bars, restaurants, open air, no division as far as, you know, the side is concerned, so a lovely day you can sit out there, and uh, as I say, just terrific facilities and Norwegian Cruise Line is another favourite of mine for going on and having a good time. Coming to a bit more of the sort of upmarket of Seaborne, Seaborne Cruises, which a lot of people love, it's all inclusive. I love the size of the ships, between 450 to 500, and certainly all inclusive as far as your alcohol is concerned, and people love that. Some of the little favourites that we have around Australia close by is Orion Cruises. I went on the Kimberleys last year, uh, and that's 108 passengers and that's a favourite of a lot of people to be on the Ryan Cruises to get up and do the Kimberley. So if you ever want to do the Kimberleys in style, you think of the Ryan Cruises, and uh, it's, as I say, got a, a very popular ship. Another one that's uh, really selling well now is Panama Canal. I did that last year on a cruise ship. I went through the Panama Canal, and I thought, you know, an hour watching the Panama Canal would be enough. I sat watching this thing go through the whole of the Panama Canal, it takes nearly a full day, fascinated by how it works, 
how they built it, the history of it, and the fact that uh, you know, from one ocean to another, you do it in nearly one day, uh, and how it works. And for about two hours, I sat on the bridge with the captain, just talking to them as they take the Panama pilots on board. And just now, you can see the building of the second canal parallel to the first one. And as I say, the history of that whole thing is fantastic. Now, another one that uh, is one of my favourites is Azamara. Uh, cruisers, which is the same size as the Oceana, smaller ones, 650 passengers. In 2015, we have that charter for two 38-day cruises in the Med, and then from the Med up to the Baltic, and uh, that's uh, we've sold already uh, about 98% of that 215 already for one of the first cruises, which will be an Antec Co for Anzac Day. Now, I'll just go quickly and move on because I know we're going to run out of time. River cruising, which I talked about earlier, some of those river boats, and I've just come off for three, uh, three weeks on an uh, APT on the, on the Rhone, the, the Rhine, and the Moselle, and just a lovely way of travelling. Get on once and unpack once, as we say with all cruising, and just enjoy yourself as you cruise the rivers of Europe, and it's become very popular, and all the new designs now with floor to ceiling, you know, uh, windows and everything else, you're just sitting there and taking it all in all inclusive as far as everything is concerned. As I say, some of the stuff that's uh, being designed and built is just, just fabulous now and capturing the imagination of Australian travellers. A lovely way to travel. Uh, you just get off each day and do your excursions, all inclusive, and you see some beautiful, beautiful parts of, of uh, the world as far as Europe is concerned. Another experience was to do the Arctic or the Antarctica, and this is a French cruise liner called uh, Pernod Cruises, this one particular ship is La Borel, which I took to the Antarctica this year in March. And uh, again, a beautiful design ship, and it's uh, a nice way to cruise Antarctica, rather, in five star cruising. This guy was working hard that day on the <laughs> And small ship cruising has come very, very popular. So I'll quickly run through, I can see Tony coming to tear me off, uh, just some of the ships. Uh, you've probably seen some of this, Orion. Um, Nova Caledonia. Silver Galapagos was one of the Silver Sea ships going to do the Galapagos Islands, which is again a favourite. The one that's coming back now that's really gaining momentum is the new ships on the Mississippi and getting rave reviews on that. Another one of the river cruise boats. <laughs> Vietnam, Mekong. Burma just had a big group come back, and Joe Mack was here with me today, did Burma, and only got back last Friday and just fell in love with Burma and what the office there. As I said, I could talk for cruising for two weeks, but I won't. I uh, just wanted to warm your appetite as far as what's happening in that market, how it's growing, and uh, as I said, it fits now so many ages. And the biggest thing we're seeing is the way that families are travelling together now having those cruises together where they've got a uh, fun time together, they can part and do things in the daytime, come back and join each other for dinner, and it really has taken up as so as multi-generational travellers. But I just see that uh, whole part of our industry growing, growing, especially as they keep developing new vessels. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>